right, everybody. Welcome back to the Eddie Austin Podcast. Today, I have a friend of mine on, Jeremiah Townsend. He is a business broker and also a very passionate person about helping other people. And that is kind of the way we got connected. And I felt like it would be a great opportunity to bring him on to let him tell his story and what he does and how he can help people. Because what he does is truly interesting. And the more times I talk to him, the more times I'm interested in what he's doing, the more times I think somebody else needs to hear this information. So take it away, my friend. <laughs> oh, yeah, great. Give me a huge platform like that, Eddie. And, and <laughs> thanks. To, nothing like making me fill big shoes. Well, you can do it. I know you can. <laughs> well, obviously, Jeremiah Townsend, I am an investor. I've been an investor for over a decade buying companies. Mm -hmm. And people keep asking for my help buying companies. And I ended up becoming a broker, creating uh, IBA United, which is a company that does business brokerage from an investor standpoint. We help uh, buy and sell companies. We help people buy and sell companies. But really from the investor standpoint, saying this is really what the company is worth. Mm -hmm. And it's, uh, let alone, it's just kind of unique to be a, a person who buys and sells companies. Mm -hmm. Uh, that's, um, it's always been entertaining when people say, Hey, Jeremiah, what do you do for a living? Right. And I, right. and you know, because everybody asks that, right. Hey, Eddie, what do you do. do for a living? Yeah. And, and my answer is uh, I buy and sell companies for a living. Well, I had a, I was getting my hair cut the other day and the, um, I guess the person cutting my hair, she wasn't really a barber. She might've been a barber, but anyway, She's cutting my hair and she asked me, you know, she's just wanting to open a conversation. She goes, are you just getting off work or uh, what do you do? And I said, well, I'm an entrepreneur. And she goes, an entrepreneur? So what is that? And I said, well, actually, I, I employ people. I said, I own, you know, probably six different companies and I'm a serial entrepreneur. She goes, oh, wow. Well, um, you must have a lot of money. And I said, <laughs> I said, the idea is yes, but you know, ultimately I mostly enjoy the, the employing people to give them an opportunity to really grow and be passionate in what they do. But more than that, no, six different companies. And as we've talked about, I'm looking forward to getting rid of some because they take a lot of my time. <laughs> so, and that's one thing about this, the conversations we've had recently about exiting one of my businesses and the, the help you are able to just advice and uh, the depth and knowledge was just amazing. Well, well, that's it is a lot of people you, you said in the very beginning, quite properly, you said a lot of people don't know they can do this. A lot of people don't know they can buy a company or sell a company. Right. And to give you an idea, there are, I, I live in the state of Texas. Mm -hmm. I work nationwide. But in the state of Texas, there's an organization called the Texas Association of Business Brokers. Okay. It's the oldest association for business brokers and intermediaries in the world. And in fact, the largest group is the IBBA, the International Business Brokers Association is the oldest. And the IBBA got their foundations and a lot of their educational material from the Texas Association. Mm -hmm. So in Texas, which is, of course, one of the largest states in the union, mm -hmm. there are less than 200 registered business brokers in the state of Texas. Wow. And I, I can only give a guess here, but based on my by phone calls and people that I talk to, out of all of those people who are registered, less than half of them are actively participating as a broker. So you're really talking about a very, very small handful, perhaps only a thousand people in the entire United States mm -hmm. are actively uh, involved with being a business broker. And that's, that's a really, I mean, we're small, minuscule. Yeah. Right. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I've heard of real estate brokers and everything else, but even this company that I bought, um, I bought this thing, I've seen it on LoopNet. And then mm -hmm. a buddy of mine, when I had actually got around to getting to this business that we recently bought, it was already off loop net. It had just been a complete failure uh, to, for them sure. to sell it. But that was the only avenue they knew was to put it on loop net. 
And a friend of mine told me about it. There was a local in the town, and he said, hey, you got to go check out this opportunity. So I did. And, you know, going through that process, if they would have had someone like you, I think they would have had a much better chance of exiting the business because you give them the upfront education on it's possible, this is what it needs to look like, we'll need to get your books in order, you know, this is what your business evaluation is, this is the cost. I've heard some people sell some electrical companies that were, you know, they've been operating this thing since they got out of high school. And they've built this business up and they were fortunate enough to probably get to, you know, 60 to 50 to 60 employees. And they're yeah. earning some really good money and then they sell it for a couple hundred grand. Well, mm -hmm. you and I both know they left a lot of money on the table. You know, they really had something, but they didn't know who to ask. They, I hear, yeah. I'm just a one right now. A guy walked into my shop the other day and he said, Eddie, would you be interested in buying another business? And it was a real estate broker. And the only reason he was selling it was because it involves the real estate. But when it comes to the actual brokerage side of the business portion, he was not utilizing it at all. You know, it was just mostly the cost of land. Not well, sure, sure. And that's the thing. Most people don't understand the true value of a business. And it's mm -hmm. not because they're ignorant. It, well, literally, it is ignorance. It's I don't know why. I exactly. don't know how to calculate costs. You don't know cost. you don't know. <laughs> but it's not because they're not smart. These people are very intelligent, very sophisticated. It's just they don't know how to price it and how to put a value on it. Mm -hmm. And so when you're looking at that, it's a very small number of people. So as an example, a couple of weeks ago, I got to teach a course on business valuations. Mm -hmm. And we had about 50 professionals sign up for this course. So quite a few um, in my sphere, quite a few investors and whatnot who are going, hey, how do I professionally value a company? Mm -hmm. And so we did this three-day course on business valuations. And the truth is, we just barely scratched the surface on that. But through that process, we were able to show people how to how you can look at some of the numbers. And if you get them wrong, you grossly overprice the business. Mm -hmm. And if you get them right, everything makes sense. And people go, oh, th that makes sense. Mm -hmm. But they don't understand why. They don't understand what the true repayment term is, what the true value is in the assets, what the true value is in the ongoing um, goodwill mm -hmm. of the customers or right. the staff. And, and, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's kind it's really complicated mm -hmm. when you look at the details, it's simple in theory, but it's right. complicated when you look at the details. Right. And even the, uh, the financing options that you are aware of that not many people are aware of, you know, as low as 10% down an SBA opportunity, I've run across many people. They've never heard of the SBA or the way. Oh yeah, that's. Happen. So in America, we have, I, I do some consulting up in Canada, mm -hmm. um, some in Australia, some in England too. So, <laughs> so um, they don't have the SBA. Right. For anybody who doesn't know, the SBA is the Small Business Administration. Right. Their goal is to help build commerce in America. That's their goal. Yeah. Their goal is to make business happen. So they have this great SBA loan program. There's several of them, but the, the big one that everybody knows is the 7A program. Yep. And what it is, is you go to a bank, a standard bank, and you ask them for a loan based on the income of the business. Right. So your personal income doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. You can get a loan for that business through the bank. They put it through the government SBA program. Mm -hmm. So a couple of hoops to jump through, but it's okay. They'll walk you through that process. And you can actually buy a company. It's standard to buy it with 10% down, but you can even buy a company in the right situations with as little as 5% down. Right. And so to give you an idea, a company that makes $100,000 a year for the owner might sell for only $200,000. So then the question is, okay, how do you come up with $200,000. You don't need $200,000. You need about 10%. Right. So you need about $20,000. Right. Well, great. You don't have $20,000. So how do you get $20,000? Uh, do a cash advance. Do a, a HELOC on your house to pull out that 20 grand. Do a loan from your 401k because usually you can get a loan up to $50,000 off your 401k. There are ways of coming up with that money 
and getting the SBA loan, which is a 10 year loan mm -hmm. to buy that company. And they'll run the numbers and they'll make sure that it qualifies. Right. So money is really not the problem. It's, it's just education and people. And that's what I'm doing with IBA United. We're putting out monthly training programs. A lot of them are free. Some of them are paid for because ultimately I want to work with people and help them buy businesses or sell businesses. And, you know, even more than that, it takes a, it takes a really savvy uh, investor or creator of opportunity, just like the business I bought, or I'm going to do a series on this or give some information on it, some bring it into context. I bought it with no money down and I never went to a bank. I did seller carryback financing, a simple interest term, and I raised the money for the down payment. So I essentially bought it with OPM and I seller financed it with the seller. And because of the nature of this business, I wanted the seller to sort of be on the hook at the same time that, you know, he's signing a agreement that I'm going to pay him, but he realizes that if the buzz, the business would not cash flow, he has a risk too, because he won't get paid. Absolutely. Absolutely. And that's something that every, every buyer and seller should take into account. Mm -hmm. We've been in a great economy, quite frankly, for many years, mm -hmm. and the economy has taken a little bit of a hit. Right. And it's no, everything is not going to hell in a handbasket. No, the world is not going to stop. No, we're not going back to Mad Max. No, um, it's it's nothing like that. Right. But people need to realize there is tons of opportunity and you're going to come across these sellers who really want to sell a business. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of tricks to it. So, for example, I just talked to somebody in Florida and I'm, I'm helping them sell their business. They wanted to sell their company $1.5 million. Mm -hmm. This is a very common story, by the way. Somebody has reached retirement age. They have a good cash flowing business. They want to sell it. Ideally, they'd like to sell it to their managers. They don't have a plan in place. And I say, I know exactly how to do that. And I actually walk them through the process. I mm -hmm. show the managers how to get the money, how to raise the money, how to put the financing together mm -hmm. and actually come to the table and get that owner cash in pocket. Right. And the managers, there's, there's even a way where the managers, if they're a part owner, I don't know if you know this about the SBA. If you are an owner of that company, even a 5% owner for two years, mm -hmm. you can go to the SBA and the SBA has an owner's buyout program where you don't have to come up with any cash. Wow. And the SBA will finance 100% of the buyout. Wow. No, I did not know that. See, that's, that's, so, <laughs> that's the reason I wanted you on here. And that's, that's it. It's those little things. Right. And like you said, you did an owner carry. I'm a, I'm a full believer in doing owner carries because if something bad happens, the owner is responsible for at least that portion. Right. But I also encourage people to take it one step further and do an owner's earn out wherever possible, mm -hmm. which means that payments are based on the performance of the business. And generally that requires the owner to earn something. So the owner has to transition the business for you right. or help with that transition. Right. So, so there can be lots of different little tricks like that. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's those little things that when, when I tell everybody, if they're working with me, I almost guarantee that they're going to save at least a hundred thousand dollars in any transaction. I believe that I really do. And it's to back up for a minute, you know, we're coming towards the end of the baby boomers, you know, yep. the baby boomers, you know, they, they got back from the war um, and they come into these different places and jobs at the time, you know, there was, kind of a, a, a difference between jobs and, and people that could start businesses. And a lot of these guys mm -hmm. come back very strong spirited and they started a lot of businesses. Now we're of an age to where those baby boomers are retiring, you know, mm -hmm. and honestly, I've seen a lot of guys that just came out of COVID and either one, they exited their business right before COVID really hit. They said, yeah, I'm at the age, I'm not about to deal with this. Or yeah. they have went through it and they want out. They're like, you know what? I'm, we just come from COVID. 
Now there's some uncertainty in the market. I'm going to go ahead and exit my company. You know, I've made mm -hmm. my money. I'm at the retirement age. I want somebody to just buy it out. And I think those people need the most help because they're not technology savvy or they don't have the, the constant um, presence to be able to grab this information. They're not watching YouTube. They're probably not yeah. watching Facebook. They're not reading articles. They do what their forefathers did. And they, they hammer down a for sale by owner sign in the front yard, or they tell a couple friends, they put it in the newspaper, and they leave a lot of money on their table that could benefit their retirement. In my opinion, that is totally my opinion. No, you're 100% right. In fact, I just dealt with something similar to that where I was speaking with an owner who decided to sell their company instead of going through a broker or instead of getting assistance. And that's how I found them. Um, they were recommended to me, said, hey, go call this company up. I called them up and it turns out they were never able to sell their company. Oh, wow. And this is, this is somebody who has worked hard. They've developed a great company. So they, they didn't make a ton, mind you. They didn't make a ton. They made fifty to hundred thousand dollars a year, which is a good living, right? Yeah. That's a good living. Mm -hmm. But it's not like they were swimming in millions. Right. They could have easily sold that company for a hundred grand right. with the putting the right deal together. Easily they could have sold that company for at least something. Mm -hmm. But it turns out they didn't. I called them back. I called them initially to have some initial conversation, and then I called them. Uh, the deal kind of fell apart, and then I called them six months later. And they were never able to sell the company and they just shut everything down. And so the seller there, because he didn't have um, some good actionable knowledge, he didn't know about SBA financing or anything like that. He lost at least a hundred thousand dollars on that deal. And, and that's a, um, you can't go back on that. That's just no. sad. No, you can't. So, yeah, that's terrible, man. It's, it's just so, nice to see people in the market that have passion like you do uh that educate you have your own youtube channel that you're putting out you know media all the time and so I, we we just started that youtube channel mm -hmm. so it's brand new i think i got about 30 videos on there yeah um something like that we, we're coming out with more all the time mm -hmm. um but yeah it's just massive it's and it's a big shift for me i have to share that with everybody this is a big shift with me with IBA United because I've been an investor for the last over a decade. Mm -hmm. I've been an investor buying companies and growing companies, right. but people just keep asking for my help and I keep helping them. Mm -hmm. And quite frankly, I wasn't always getting paid. I was just right. doing it. pro. I was doing it pro bono. Right. And, uh, and so then I started getting all these people, all these brokers and investors saying, Jeremiah, help me find my next deal. Right. Help me find my next deal. Help me sell this business. And I, and I go, fine. And I started that. So this is a main, major push for us with a whole bunch of new videos and everything else that we're doing uh, as of 2023. And we're excited about it. Yeah. I mean, your YouTube channel, you've always been an educator on Facebook. Uh, that's where I found you at. Um, and then what really got me to notice you was every, I'm a part of a business, um, for business owner for sale page. Um, uh -huh. on Facebook. And it seemed like almost every time a business come up for sale, you were one of the first people to jump on it. And I thought this person is very active. And at that point I said, I want to talk to him because I had some questions around how you afford to do it. You know, if you were using, if you were raising money, stuff like that, because I'm a person that comes from a fund manager. I'm a real estate fund manager. Um, you know, we have our real estate investment firm and just like for you, I've always been a business operator, entrepreneur, um, built businesses and operated businesses, but I had a ton of people. They said, how did you go from being an entrepreneur in the business world? And now you're buying these large properties. How is that done? So these investment conferences I go to, I have people approach me and they ask me a few questions. Like, how do you have the money? You know, you, yeah. you, how do you have the money to buy these, to buy businesses and buy buildings? And I said, I use OPM. Well, they, they yeah. always say, well, what is that? It's other people's money. And immediately people go, well, that's got to be legal. And I said, no, that's, <laughs> you know, that's, that's the part I'm a fund manager. So, you know, 
You can do that with a syndication. You could do it with tenant in common. But for you, you had people reach out to you constantly. Now today, yeah. Jennifer and I are starting our first coaching program to teach people how do you how do you structure syndication or a real estate fund to do what we do. And you could do that well, with business buy. I'll be honest, Eddie. I think I think what you just said is the next gold rush. I mean, this is going to blow the gold rush away right. is transitioning real estate investors and real estate investment funds away from real estate and into buying businesses. Right. Because I hate to say it, I, and not to disparage any form of investment, every investment has its place and is good. I've owned real estate. And what I do is I buy a cash flowing company mm -hmm. and then I buy the associated real estate. Right. So my expense becomes an income generator for me, a right. wealth builder. Now, now all that being said, I think the next gold rush is to transition um, real estate investors who are are very happy getting seven to ten percent return on their money, which is an okay return, mm -hmm. and transitioning to small business ownership, mm -hmm. where even under a leveraged terms where you have an investment fund, you can give a 20 to 50% return right. very commonly right. for those investors. Yeah. And that's just mind blowing. And it I'm is. gonna take it one, I, I, I'll take it one step further, one step further. So any business that I have bought, I have never gotten less than a 200% annual ROI. Right. Well, it's like, I don't know if you follow Alex Hormozzi, um, Alex Hormozzi mm -hmm. owns a portfolio sure. of companies, you know, a hundred million dollars a year. I think that's EBDA, but at the same time, he believes that real wealth is created in business. Real money comes from business. And I would agree. And I also being a real estate investor, a real estate investment, especially even multifamily, you know, a multifamily is probably one of the safest investments on the planet. Absolutely. But the problem is, it's slow money. And I know I'm going to make, that's a controversial statement right there, but it, it, no. is, it really is. It's like you said, it's seven to 10% returns. There's a lot more. No, risk. You, you just hit it nail on the head. Mm -hmm. So um, buying a company can be very fast money, very fast payoff, but there is more risk and there's exactly. more, there's more volatility. Right. So there's, there's greater chance for up, and there's greater chance of down. And as far as real estate concern, I think multifamily is the best real estate investment that anyone can possibly make. Mm -hmm. If you want to invest in real estate, multifamily is absolutely the number one way to go. And you and I know exactly why. Yes. You know, there's many, many reasons there why. There is. And you know, that's one of the things, you know, the next thing that we've talked about and that we're, we're going to do. So JE Capital right now is in between real estate funds. But the next one, I don't think it's going to be a real estate fund. I think we're going to break into the private equity space. I would like to do a 506C private equity offering of $100 million in size. And with that, we'll probably be a 60% in real estate. And probably, I would say 30% of that would be for business buyouts, some business buyout opportunity. And then the other 10%, sure. I think I'd leave for hard money lending meaning for down payments, um, for real estate flips, stuff like that. Because I feel like I agree with you. The, the boom is going to take place. The next gold rush will be for a diversified style fund. Maybe those businesses have real estate. So we'd be interested in those in that 60% side. And then maybe some of them are online or something of that sort that would be in that 30% category. And then maybe there's people that actually need some type of a structured down payment. And that would Ab be absolutely, that is 100% correct. And there's, there's so much value there. And the thing that scares me, the thing that bothers me most is that number one, people just don't know they can do this. Mm -hmm. They don't know they can go out and buy a company because they're unaware and they haven't been educated on that. And number two is that business sellers, business owners don't really know how to sell their business. And it's, it's the largest asset they have, right? It is the largest asset they have. Mm -hmm. And they don't know if their company is worth a hundred thousand or a million dollars. Right. And 
And this is the sad truth. The sad truth is most business owners think their business is worth more than it really is. True. It's, and then it never it's an sells. unfortunate truth. Yeah. And then what happens is they have it on the market and it never sells and it never sells because they just don't know how to calculate out the value. But the investors who buy companies, they're the ones who really decide on the selling price. The investors look at that and they go, I'm not going to pay that. Mm -hmm. And this is why this is why over 80 percent of companies will never sell. Mm -hmm. They actually just shut down. And even if they use a professional um, uh, a professional such as myself, a broker, statistically, those companies, only about half of those sell. But there's still half. That's mm -hmm. that's actually I think that's a horrible number to get the majority. And the reason only half of them sell is usually because the broker doesn't understand numbers. They don't understand uh, how to to price the business. Mm -hmm. And I say that I know I'm disparaging my own industry for a moment, but brokers are not trained financial analysts. Right. Right. I got my start in a CPA firm dealing with financial analysis and audits. Right. So I know how to price a company. I've been dealing with business valuations for 15 years now. Mm -hmm. And so I, I know how to price businesses. Right. I know what investors are going to pay. Mm -hmm. But most brokers don't. And they just have a rule of thumb that they go off of. And you put that rule of thumb in place and you find out the business, the seller ended up selling it or trying to sell it for a lot more. Right. And sometimes the brokers, the brokers are usually innocent of this. Mm -hmm. I want to emphasize that because sometimes they just, they just do what they're told right? or they just go with off of what they know, mm -hmm. but it's the investors that really judge how successful they are. Right. Yeah. Man, I cannot thank you enough for the time today. And, uh, this is some absolutely great information. Everything I hoped it would be, um, how is the best way to get a hold of you? Uh, if someone has a business they want to sell? You know, the best way is to go to the website, ibaunited.com, ibaunited.com. And that stands for investors, brokers, and advisors. Okay. Because I'm a business investor, a business broker, and a business advisor. So ibaunited.com. And that's the best way to get in touch with me. You'll see me on Facebook. You'll see me a little bit on LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. But that's the best way to get in touch with us. Well, I cannot thank you enough for the time, and uh, I hope everybody enjoyed the show today. And if you have any questions at all, I will have this information in the description of this video, uh, along with any other information. If you want more information or you want something like this, please take the time to like and subscribe to the channel as it helps the channel grow. And the same for him. He has a YouTube channel, and I would encourage each and every one of you to go to that channel. He has 30 videos and he just started. When I first started my YouTube channel, I barely got one or two videos out. And for him <laughs> to just start with 30 videos, he has worked his butt off and I know that personally. So please, by all means, go to his channel and subscribe. And it's the same, is it correct, the IBA United? Uh you're going to have to do a search. Uh, let's see. I think it's called uh, Business Broker Advisor, the Business Broker Advisor. It's okay. uh, just so it's YouTube.com slash the at symbol because that's how YouTube yep. does it at well, Business I, Broker Advisor. I will also put his channel in the description of the video so you can find him. Thank you guys so much for the time and have a great day and be extraordinary.